Hello everyone! Welcome to one more Unity tutorial video, this time regarding loading scenes and loading screens. We'll begin by explaining what happens inside Unity when a scene is changed, then we'll structure the way in which it will be loading, followed by actually coding a scene change script. First of all, a scene is basically an independent entity, where you can store a certain number of game objects. In a regular scene change, when you're going from scene 1 to scene 2, it means that all game objects from the first scene will be destroyed, and all from scene 2 will be loaded. Nowadays, you can also load a scene additively, meaning that scene 1 will maintain its game objects loaded, with the objects from scene 2 added on top of them. There are many ways in which one may separate their game into scenes, from only one very large scene, managing carefully the loading and unloading of entities independently, to storing every system in a separate scene, and loading additively all of them accordingly. We are going for this tutorial cover a scene change with a loading screen, assuming that each level of a certain game is stored in a different scene, and a loading screen separates both levels while loading the new scene. Since by default all game objects are destroyed when a scene is unloaded, Unity has a function called Don't Destroy Unload. This function prohibits Unity from ever unloading its game object until you purposely destroy it using the destroy function. This is typically used for scripts or objects that are unaltered from level to level, such as in-game menus, the main character, or even background music to allow the music to continue even through scene changes so that you don't hear a distinct break. You can also change scenes synchronously or asynchronously. In the first case, it means that as soon as the load function is called, the unload of the first scene and loading of the second begin at the same time, meaning that the time exists where no scene is actually loaded. Asynchronously means that the second scene is loaded into memory while the first scene has not been unloaded. Only when the load into memory finishes, the first scene is unloaded, and the objects from the second scene are activated. We will then use this async loading on a scene change script with a don't destroy unload function. We will also create a loading screen canvas and add a simple fade in and fade out animations of such canvas. The scene change script will also make the canvas a don't destroy unload. When the async load of a new scene begins, we will start the fade-in animation on the loading screen. When the loading is actually complete, the first scene will be destroyed, but not our scene change script nor our loading canvas, so we can still call a function from them. We will then call the fade-out animation and we're done. I hope everyone could understand how all will be done, but if not entirely, stick until the end, as it will be easier to understand while actually coding. Okay, so here we are back in Unity. Okay, I have here a sample scene. It's a very simple scene. Uh, don't mind most of the stuff here. It was made for my dialogue system tutorial. But basically you have a character that can move left and right. And we are going to eventually create a collider trigger. And when the character hits that trigger, it's going to change from the sample scene to a scene called scene two. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is to create a new canvas. And this canvas is going to be our loading screen. So let's call it loading screen. We're going to load we're going to add to this loading screen both a UI image and a UI text. This image was we are going to make it black, and of course we need to zoom out to see our canvas here. Okay, so we zoomed out, we're going to make this image the size of the canvas or even larger oh, sorry if we want to there you go and just the text we're going to make it a little bit uh, larger we're going to write loading make it white and a much bigger font size there you go so this is going to be our very simple loading screen okay so we are going now going to this load to the loading screen canvas and we're going to create a new animation and this animator is going to have both our fade in and fade out animations so we're going here to create 
and here inside our asset we're going to create a new folder called animations inside of it something called loading screen okay and we will name one of our animations fade in okay and this animation is just going basically to start with our image completely faded and our text likewise and then we're going to make it run for only one second and we're going to sh I'm going to show it why in a second but after this whole one second here as you can see that we're going to make both the loading and the image completely appear so with the maximum uh, or the minimum transparency if, if, if you want so we're going here and there you go so now you have this animation that just does something like this and takes one second and now you go here you create a new clip you call it fade out and you do the exact opposite so in the beginning it is completely visible and one second later everything disappears There you go. So we now have our fade in and our fade out animations. One thing that is quite important to do is that you have to go here to your project window, search for the fade in and fade out animations. So there you go. I have some more here, but anyway. And remember that this loop time has to be disabled. So basically this allows you to allow to, sorry, to, to enable or disable loop. So if this is unchecked, then the animation is going to run only one time and not repeatedly as it is done by default. And there you go. Okay, brilliant. That's all in terms of uh, our loading screen. So now we can get into coding and to see what the scripts actually do, okay? So I have already created a script that I called scene changes script and I'm going to try and go through it and explain to you what he does. Okay, so this is our scene changer script. Basically, he does all that async changing that we that we talked about. So the first thing that I need to point out is that we need to add the library Unity Engine dot scene management. Okay, we can he we can see here the variables. And the first variable that I created is the time to transition. And this time to, transi to transition is going to uh, represent the minimum time of loading that exists, that exists between two scenes. And this is very important because you can have you know, slow computers that take one minute or two minutes to load a new scene. Or you can have these super fast computers that do it in you know, half a second. But if you want to have an animation and a loading screen in between, uh, of course this animation is going to take time so you want to allow even for the faster computers to show that animation and not cut it in the middle uh, which would make for some you know weird graphics and weird stuff so two seconds is going to be the minimum time for transition so even the faster computers that can load a new scene in less than two seconds we're going to make them wait for the two second mark before unloading the first scene and activating the objects of the of the second scene okay so this public game object loading canvas is of course being our loading screen we're going then to access its animator this uh, is loading function uh, boolean is just for us to know if we are or not loading quite simple and we are, we're going to see why I also need this variable called time elapsed so the first thing that we do is that we create this awake function which is going to be called before start and we just set this game object as a don't destroy unload straight away in our start function we're going to check if we have a loading screen or not and if we do have a loading screen we're going to deactivate it so that nothing is going to be shown we're going to access its animator component and we, we are also going to set it as a don't destroy on load. So both the loading screen and the object to which the scene changer is attached are not going to be destroyed in a scene change. 
We now have this load sync function that receives the name of the scene as a string as an argument. And if we are not yet loading, we will start a coroutine that is called load your async scene. So a coroutine for those who don't know is basically a function that is going to be run in parallel to the main code. So generally in Unity, this code is all um, uh, in series. So one function after the other, after the other, after the other. And whatever is inside this function, load your async scene as a coroutine is going to be loaded parallelly to the rest of the code. And we can define that it is a, um, a coroutine and not a function by stating I enumerator before the name of the function that we want to give to this coroutine. So the first thing we do inside this function is say, okay, we are now loading. I will set time elapsed to zero. And we are going to start loading the new scene asynchronously. And all of the status of this operation is going to be uh, accessible through this async load uh, variable that I now created of type async operation. And what I'm going to do is that I'm not going to allow the new scene to be activated. Okay? So, and this is, is because I told you before that I don't want any computer for whatever, for how fast it is to load before that time to transition mark. I'm going to allow for the scene to be, to start to be loaded, but if it approaches to be complete, I'm going to stall it and wait for it to reach the time to transition mark and only then I will allow it to be completed. And this stall can be done using the allow scene activation function, which I'm going to set initially to false. Then of course, and again, if I have a loading screen, I'm going to set it to true. I'm going to change its speed to one over time to transition. And remember, we made fade in and fade out as a one second animation. So if you want a two second animation, then its speed will have to be half. If you want a three second animation, we have to put the speed three times less than the original speed. And so that's mathematically one over the time to transition. And then we will play the fade in animation. Quite simple. And of course, if we don't have any kind of loading screen, we don't need to wait for any animation to be completed. So I'm just going to say that the time to transition is going to be zero. So as fast as your computer can do stuff, here we're going to load the new scene. I can do now this while function. And so meaning that this function is going to be stuck in this while. Uh, if the async load dot is done, is false. So async load dot is done, well, it's quite simple, is that if the asynchronous loading is complete, then this is going to be set to true. And a scene or a, a, an asynchronous load complete means not only that the scene is completely loaded, but also that that allow scene activation is going to be set to true. And so I only want this allow scene, allow scene activation to be set to true if the time elapsed has been greater than my time to transition, which is the minimum amount of time that I want the loading screen to be active. And so after this while, so meaning after async.load.is dot is done is equal to true, I will say that my is loading is false. I am now in the new scene, but of course I have still my loading screen active and I need to fade out my loading screen with the speed of one over time to transition as the fade in just to make it, you know, even or symmetric. And then I will wait for the animation to end. So this yield return new wait for seconds means that it's going to wait and not go to the next uh, line for time to transition seconds. And after that, I'm going to set my loading canvas game object to false again. Okay, so I hope that it was understood by everybody. So here back in Unity, I need to create this new game object 
called scene changer and I'm going to add the scene changer script. Time to transition, I'm going to leave at two for now. And the loading canvas is going to be our loading screen. Okay. Uh, let me just, okay. So I need only now to say when do I want to call this load function. And for that, I have created this function load scene on trigger, which is very, very, very simple, okay? It basically just says that a variable called scene changer is equal to the script scene changer. And whenever the player that is called by its string hits the collider trigger, then the load scene function is going to be called. As simple as that. So I can create here a new game object called scene to trigger. I will add a box collider. Oh, and set it is trigger to true. Place it right about here. And I will add the load scene on trigger function. The scene is going to be scene two and the player in this case is called Peter. There's just one last thing that we need to do for this to work. So we need to go here to file, build settings, and we need to add the scene that we want to change to here in our scenes in build. And we can do that by add open scenes. Of course, this only adds the scene that we're in. So this is going to add our scene one. So we need to go and open our new scene, which is called scene two. It's a very simple scene, it has basically nothing. Go here to file, build settings, add open scenes. There you go. Now we can go back to our first scene again. And if everything is correct and I did not make any mistake, I can now move this Peter guy and whenever he hits the collider, there you go, the loading screen, it changed and ta-da, here we are in scene two. As simple as that. Okay, so for all is now, this has been a, a quite quite longer than I, than I expected, but I hope you have understood it all. Uh, please, uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, leave a like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel for more um, news and for more tutorials regarding Unity. And as usual, you know, if you have any doubts, just write your comment below. I usually am quite fast at responding and, uh, and at helping with all, with all your doubts. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. Thanks a lot. Ciao.